and talk a little bit about um, my own background and how I came to this work. And then I'd like to get into the details of why I'm here. Really talk to you all about uh, what's happening in Washington and why you all are so very important in actually affecting what happens in Washington uh, over the next year and for the foreseeable future, honestly. So FCNL, uh, how many folks in here are familiar with FCNL? All right, so almost, almost the whole room. So I'll just be very brief. You know, we've been around for around 67 years, uh, a very long uh, standing organization. We are a Quaker lobby in the public interest on Capitol Hill. And we were founded after World War II, really out of the need and the, and the desire to have uh, friends voice on Capitol Hill, uh, the witness of friends on Capitol Hill. Uh, I, uh, the folks who founded FCNL believed that there was a real gap in um, the, what was happening policy-wise and, and the consciousness of friends. So that was really the impetus for starting uh, the Friends Committee on National Legislation. We have grown into an organization that is governed by hundreds of Quaker meetings uh, around the country. Every two years in a new Congress, we solicit our priorities from these meetings, these yearly and monthly meetings around the country. They submit uh, to us what they think we should work on. We put those together, and then we uh, take that document and put it to our general committee, which is uh, a, a body that is uh, essentially representative of these Quaker meetings. And they vote whether or not, or they, you know, by consensus, I should say, uh, whether or not to, to adopt this document. And that really, that is our guiding document for the next two years for the new Congress. So we're in this process now. This November, our priorities will change a little. And they're not dramatic shifts always. Uh, sometimes things fall off of our priorities list. Sometimes things get added on. Uh, there's been a big push uh, in the last few years to include... Um, campaign finance reform and money and politics and our priorities. So now we're looking at how we can do that and ways to do that. So just to give you an example, I'm very, I feel very privileged to work for FCNL. Number one, because we're a, a well-functioning nonprofit, which is fairly rare. Uh, for anyone who's been associated with nonprofits or worked for nonprofits, uh, there's plenty of dysfunction out there. But, but also, uh, I feel very fortunate because we are really a democratic organization. We, we essentially are governed and um, we get our priorities from the people around the country who really want us to focus on these things that are very near and dear and passionate, uh, they're, that they're passionate about. So um, really can't say enough about that. We're one of the only non-Native uh, groups working on Native American rights. We uh, have a nuclear disarmament program. We work on reducing Pentagon spending. Uh, we work on a variety of other issues, including foreign policy, preventing war with Iran, uh, coming up with a peaceful solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Uh, ending the war in Iraq, uh, and now ending the war in Afghanistan, and that's actually my area of expertise. Uh, well, specialize. I'm, I don't think there is such a thing as an Afghanistan expert. That's one of the things I've learned in the last couple of years. Uh, as much as you think you understand, there's always more to know. Uh, but it's a, it's a very dynamic organization uh, in that we have this breadth and depth of issues. We have about 40 staff. We're the largest peace lobby on Capitol Hill. 